Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. It's Daffodil Day. So I wore my Daffodil shirt. So according to Michelle, I had to do the Mr. Rogers moment so that you could see I had daffodils on before I put my jacket on. So I'm playing Mr. Rogers, putting my sweater on, which my jacket, with my daffodil top. And of course I have my coffee. That's the important part. We've got that. We are ready to roll. How are you doing today? It's Wednesday, the week before Valentine's week. Oh my gosh. Moving into the crazy busy time. You know, it's the holiday that we love to hate because you do so much and it's so exciting because you're doing so much, but it's just too much. You just kind of go crazy with it. It's like, really? I got to do all that? <sighs> and this year is different in that it is on a Sunday. And that kind of changes the dynamics. It's the middle, middle of a pandemic. So that definitely changes the dynamics. So it's going to be an interesting time. I thought, you know what? We're just going to skip Valentine's this week. We're not going to go there. Instead, we're going to do yellow and daffodils, my flower. Next week, we'll come back and we'll do Valentine's again because we can't ignore it totally. A little bit of housekeeping. If you're on your phone, if you turn it sideways, you can see a bigger picture. If the comments bother you, swipe and it'll put it in silent mode. So you just see the picture and you don't see the comments, which is nice. Now I'll make a point. I know some of you watch me from working and you're not supposed to be on your phone. So you keep it down by your side, but you're listening through your earbuds. And I'll say, what do you think? And that means pick the phone up and look at it so you can see. So we'll play the little games today to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and how it goes. But let's get started. Now in the studio with me today, we have teacher Michelle. Hello. Hello, hello. And we have teacher Marisa. Hi, everybody. And then on tech, we have Parker, making sure that we stay live and keep things going. Hello. Hey, hey. Then virtually, we have Susie. She's on YouTube with you all. And we have Caledonia on Facebook with you all. And David's lurking here too. We can't miss out on David. He's there. So David, say hi if you can type that in there. But um, we're all here and you're here. So take a moment, type in where you're from. If you're part of the tribe, add your tulip. But get to know each other because this hour, this hour is for all of us to get together and to collaborate. I learn from you, you learn from me, we all share and we connect. And that's what makes life worth living, that connection. We don't get enough of that these days because of pandemic, but thanks to technology, we can connect virtually. So thanks for being here. So again, put your tulip in, introduce yourself, get to know each other. If you're a first timer, let us know because we definitely want to reach out and get to know you. And then we'll start talking about daffodils. I have some that are not open right now. I purposely set these aside and kept them cold so that they wouldn't get beautiful like the ones you see over here. This is the way you want to buy them. When you buy daffodils, always buy them as tight as you possibly can because once they start to open and they're exquisite and beautiful, then they don't last as long. So you want to be able to get them when they're tight like this and then watch them open and interact with them. Now, if you're selling them and you want them to go out with an order, you can reach in and manually open them and get them ready just like so. That way they're beautiful and ready to go out with an order. Others, if they're like this and they're so tight, it's too soon to open them. You just have to let them wait, let them bloom out. As they get a little further, like this one where it started to crack and pop, then again, you can open them out just like so. One tip, and if you've been to flower school, you already know this. We teach it in basic floral design right at the very, very beginning. Daffodils, when you first get them, you must process them 
separate from all your other flowers. They don't play well with others. You need to put them in a vase all by themselves. Don't put them in a vase with other blossoms because daffodils secrete a sap and that sap gets into the water and it kills other flowers. Now once you've processed them, you've hydrated them and let them sit for a couple of hours, then you can mix and match them. And we'll be doing that today and it's totally fine. But that first time, you need to definitely do that. I know I teach this over and over and over again and I can remember one January, I got so excited. It was a cold, gray January. It was horrible. And I got so excited and I ran out and I bought daffodils and tulips and I came running home and I cut them and I put them in a vase in the house and the tulips all died. And it was simply because I had not separated them. Had I separated them for a couple of hours and then put them out, would have been fine, but I didn't do that. Bad Leanne, bad Leanne, not what I should have done. Silly me, but it is what happened. So while I gather some flowers up here, Marisa, Michelle, what's going on out in the world? Oh my goodness, they are all chiming in on YouTube. We've got people from all over the world, all over the US. Uh, Elaine, Debbie, Janet, Carla are all chiming in. We've got Washington, Alabama, New Jersey. I feel like I'm doing a Miss America pageant. New Jersey, <laughs> Nebraska, Massachusetts, Indiana, Wisconsin. Doreen is in North Wales, United Kingdom, and she said it's 11 p.m. She's eating ice cream and watching you. <laughs> what flavor is your ice cream, Doreen? I'm jealous. I am an ice cream person, too. I love ice cream. You know, I'm not really huge on candy. I'm not a big sweets person, although if it's in front of me, I will put it in my mouth. But ice cream, I kind of like. Oh, my gosh. And I'm, I'm partial to, like, butter pecan. I like the crunchy nut. That's kind of my thing there. But So, Doreen, what are we enjoying tonight? What are we all jealous of? So. And Leanne, over on this side, I have quite a list of tulips over here on Facebook. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. We have Robin and Scott, Gayla, Annie, who I'm very jealous of because she's in Arizona and it's 82 degrees there. Oh, Annie, I'm jealous. Tabitha, we have both Sharons with us. Carl, Kim, Roxy, Linda, Cindy, Kathleen, Diane, Chris, Andrea, Molly, Nikki, Diane, Penny, Maria, Trish, Drake, Olga, and Janet. And shout out to Natasha and Bernie from Ireland, who are um, first timers. Okay, everyone, give a shout out to the first timers. Show them some love, welcome them, because that's part of what we are as a tribe. We welcome each other and support each other. So I thought for my first arrangements, I would do something. We're in the middle of advanced class right now. We just um, started on Monday, and I actually taught Monday morning, which was a great deal of fun because I don't teach as often as I would like, and it was just a blast to go through the advanced design techniques. And then as I was working to get ready today, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do some of the things I did with the students. So one thing we share with you is how to use the 3M Super 77 spray glue so I started with that and first off just covered this container with Gaelic sleeves, which Gaelic sleeves are one of my most favorite things in the entire world. I know Marisa keeps saying, we have enough, and then I buy more. And she's like, Leanne, we have plenty of Gaelic, and I buy more. I love Gaelic sleeves. Um, they look to me like little lily pads almost. And so I figure if you have Gaelic sleeves and bear grass, you can green the world. You have everything at your fingertips. Um, sometimes they're icky and you have to kind of pick through, but you can paint them and they hold the paint really fabulously. They come in light green to burgundy, kind of a mahogany hue. And I used to think it was two different varieties, so I call my wholesalers and I'm like, oh, I'd like the mahogany Gaelic, and they would send me green. And I'd call my wholesalers and say, oh, I like green Gaelic, they'd send me mahogany. And I would get very upset because I'm like, excuse me, I've ordered. And it turns out it has nothing to do with variety. It is 
the maturity and the stage. So basically, and as it gets colder and towards the end of the season, they turn mahogany. When it's the beginning of the season and it's like springtime, they're green. So the lightest green is at the beginning of the season, then summer is the darker green, and then autumn gets to that mahogany hue. Little did I know, but um, they're kind of cool. They're very cool. So I used the 3M Super 77 spray glue and covered my container to create just a lovely little organic vessel to work with. Then it has floral foam inside. I used a clay pot for the container, so I had to put a plastic liner inside with just a little bit of foam, not very much. Some styrofoam in the bottom to elevate, then setting it in. This one, I did the same thing on a clay pot but instead of cutting the stems off, I left the stems just because I thought they were kind of cool. And my favorite part is when you can still see the root on there. I mean, is that not funky, the little roots and everything? I just think that that's the coolest thing ever. Um, and so I just glued them upside down and let the stems just keep going to give it a very organic, funky look. And if you don't like it, you know what, oh well, you could always cut them off and pretend. You look at this one. If you don't like stems, do this one. If you tolerate stems, do this one. But this one I have no foam. I'm doing foam free. So I just have a liner in there filled with water. This one I have a liner with foam. So both of them, Super 77 spray glue. Now you know my trick. What you got there, Michelle? Well, Dawn, I mispronounced her name earlier said she's having strawberry ice cream with fresh pineapples and crushed strawberries. Oh, wow. I know. Yum. Good job. Okay. So what else is going on out there as far as eating? You guys can make <laughs> us all hungry. Marisa, what do you have there? Okay. I'm curious to this answer. So John wants to know, okay, so since daffodils are poisonous to other flowers, are they poisonous to other breeds of daffodils? Now, I do not know this. I have no facts to support this. But this is my theory, okay? Leanne's theory, take it for what it's worth. My personal assumption is if that sap is detrimental to other flowers, it probably is detrimental to the daffodil because it's making the water cloudy, murky, yucky, contaminated. I mean, do you want to sit in your own excrement? No, and so my theory is when I do daffodils, I cut them, put them in water, and I let them sit for two hours, and then I take them out and I change that water and put them in fresh water, and I think they last longer. Again, that is not scientific. It's Leanne's theory and sort of that just, you know, when you think about it, it's like, would you want to sit in, yeah. So you just don't, and so you would move. And that's what I do with the daffodils, I move them. Now I'm removing the leaves so that I just have the blooms. And this variety with that orange center is just exquisite. I love, 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 love this one. And um, it was funny because I knew I wanted to do daffodils. So I sent a note to Jimmy, who was a graduate of the school in 1971. Yeah. We've been around since 1969. He was a 1971 graduate, and he is still working in the industry. He works for a wholesale company. And I said, Jimmy, what daffodils do you have? And he quickly said, well, we have some very cool ones, and this was one, and then look at this one with the ruffles and the multiple petals. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm like, oh, Jimmy, I love you. So he sent us so many great daffodils so that I could have them. So what I'm doing now is I'm clustering these in my hand and just lining their heads up. Then I'm going to judge my size based on this particular container. And I need a few more in here because I want it to be full and lush and pretty fabulous. Leanne, Lori wants to know, um, how long do the Gaelic sleeves stay look nice? Weeks. The Gaelic will dry and look gorgeous for weeks. It doesn't really change. Now, after weeks, you know, after you do have them for a while and they start to get really crispy, then you could lacquer it gold or silver or yellow. You know, you could change the color, and then they look great 
for forever. One other little tip that I learned is if you take your Galix while they're still fresh like this, and you spray them with the Design Master Glossy Wood Tone. So it's one of their, their, their hues. So it's the Design Master for Flowers paints um, called Glossy Wood Tone. If you spray them with the Glossy Wood Tone, it's like it seals and petrifies them and they just last. And last and last and last and last. And the glossy wood tone, tone is translucent, so it doesn't really change their color. It just um, shines them a bit. Okay, I need them a little bit shorter. So what I did is I put a rubber band on them, and then I'm shortening them. I don't want them to be quite so. I could have used a tie of some sort, but I figured a rubber band was as easy as anything. And then just nestle them down in. Just like so, divide them out. And then to finish it, just going back with some of the magical Gaelic sleeves that do everything for everything that are just so grand. I mean, that's all you need, trust me. I love that, Leanne. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, I think that one I might have so to go home that. with me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. You know, daffodils are a magic flower. They immediately make you happy. They, um, they just, they're so happy. They smile. They're perky flowers. They're not the longest lasting flower. But you know that, that fleeting beauty and quality of short life is part of their beauty. It's what makes them magical. Now we have a class coming up, Basic Floral Design, that starts on um, March 1st. And daffodils are one of those flowers that we can't get year-round. They're a seasonal flower. But the March students, they're going to get daffodils because they'll be available. So that's a pretty lucky time. And then the other thing that's pretty lucky for the March students is that we're having a price increase. So guys, take note. This is the bad news. Sorry to be the bearer of bad tidings. But March 1st, our prices go up on all of our professional classes. So Basic Floral Design Online goes up March 1st, um, Basic Floral Design in the Classroom, Advanced Floral Design Online, and Advanced Floral Design in the Classroom. All of them go into the new pricing on March 1st. So if you're thinking about joining us, sign up before March 1st and get the current pricing so you'll save money. So if you're looking at online, do it by February 28th. You'll get the lower price because March 1st, midnight, February 28th, the price changes and we'll not be honoring any exceptions on that. So you wanna make sure that you get that done. Don't, don't shortchange yourself. Um, so the March 1st professional class, they'll be the last ones to get the current pricing and they're gonna get daffodils how cool is that? All the things that you need and want, and it's perfect. Michelle. So, Lenny wants to know, do daffodils continue to grow in an arrangement like tulips? You know, I don't believe so. It seems like daffodils just sort of do their thing um, and stay just as is. I don't see that they grow. What is your guys' experience? Has anybody out there seen daffodils grow? I haven't. I, I think they just sort of stay put. I haven't. You haven't either? Mm -hmm. um, Only when they're like growing on the plant, they keep growing taller. I know, but, but then you gotta it. water it and keep it alive. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's so hard. Man, I think I may have given the tribe um, incorrect information. Um, is the container that you were working with, does that have just water or foam? This one is just water. Okay. This I told is... them both, so that okay. was my fault. So this, this design is just in water, water with flower food. I did not put foam in this one. This one I am going to use foam. You can see, so I'm gonna do both because I think you really need both. You know, it just sort of depends on what you're doing. But I wanted to do, this is just a fun one, just something a little different. If you don't like the um, Gaelic stems, another way you could do it is just take your daffodils and band it together. Okay, and get my 
things in here. Give it a cut. Get my handy dandy rubber band. And of course, I'm reuse, recycle, repurpose. These are the rubber bands that the daffodils came in and I saved them, so I'm being very earth conscious here. Okay, so I've got my daffodils and I've got my little plastic. And what I'm doing then, just taking a little tiny vase. Put a little bit of water. And then set them down in. Oops, I could do more. I've got more room in there. You know what? I'm going to get some more daffodils. You can never have too many daffodils. You can always do more. What else is going on while I get more daffodils in here? Melanie would like to know if you use a special kind of flower food with daffodils or tulips. You can. There is a spring bulb flower food. I tend to not use it, to be perfectly honest. I use just regular flower food, but there is a bulb flower food and some people swear by it. So experiment, see if you think that that's even better. That's kind of something for you to decide. Um, but yes, there is a bulb flower food if you were curious and wanted to experiment with that. Um, and it is said to make your bulbs last longer. So you on the tribe out there, how many of you have ever used the bulb flower food and would you recommend it for others? What are your thoughts there? Leanne, Molly um, actually made a comment about Gaelic leaves. She says, are they stinky? Um, they can be, but not always. If you take, um, if you take them and air them out, you know, lay them, just out where they air a bit, then, then they're not stinky. But they are stinky if you leave them um, enclosed and wet. So like if they come in the box or in a plastic bag that's wet, they are going to be stinky, guaranteed. Um, but if you take them out of that, then they're not. Okay. Now I'm just twisting these a little bit. And then you can see what I was using now as I bend them. Flexi straws, okay? This is in honor of Lee. We have flexi straws because sometimes it's a flexi straw kind of day. And just kind of going around, then setting them down in and adjusting. And I'm gonna shorten that because they're just too, too long for that vase. I'm not happy with it. So we're gonna pull this down a little bit and make them shorter, but still keep the flexi in there because I want that. But I'm going to shorten them down a little bit. And it gives you an alternative to the Gaelic stems. Okay. What else is going on out there? Leanne, um, Tabitha is asking if daffodils, excuse me, daffodils, can they be combined with garden roses after they have been processed? Yes, they can. You can combine them with anything once they've been processed. It's just at the beginning that you can't. At the beginning, you have to keep them separate. So figure two hours of separate, and then you can mix them. So for example, here in my foam, I'll use a few more daffodils. And Leanne, you have quite the international crowd over here on Facebook. Okay, we have Australia, Ireland, Florida, Maine, South Dakota, Washington, Michigan, a couple people from Minnesota, Wales, Spain, Iceland, Pennsylvania, Texas, Canada, and the UK. Cool. You know, how many of you are in snow land? Because it's been such a snowy, snowy storm. I'm just like amazing and I'm thrilled that it's happening before Valentine's Day and not during Valentine's Day. But I've been watching people's pictures and it's just like a snow frenzy. Um, so how many of you are in the snow? What's going on out there? So daffodils, then I could put those with maybe a rose or two. 
because they have sat for more than two hours. They sat for a couple of days, to be perfectly honest. So we can bring these in. Leanne, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think quick dip could help to flush out the sap? I don't think it makes any difference. <coughs> um, I don't think it would make any difference. It probably would not hurt, but I don't think it would help. So it's probably not worth the effort. Um, personal choice, but I, I probably wouldn't bother. Uh, I think it would just be fine without. Well, it looks like we have, let's see, oh, oh my. So Sue, where is Sue? Sue has 20 plus inches of snow. Let's see, Alaska hasn't had the same amount like they did 12 years ago. Um, it's currently snowing in Washington, D.C. And in Colorado, in the mountains. Yeah, it's amazing. And I know Iowa and Indiana had a little bit in some areas and then a lot in other areas. North Dakota, I saw some pictures that were just like, oh my goodness. Um, and so depending on where you are, some people have, you know, like 18 inches, 24 inches. It's just kind of like, whoa, amazing. Janet says they have 20 inches in New Jersey and they're expecting another storm right now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's just like, whoa. And so again, thankful that it's not Valentine's Day yet, but it's going to affect Valentine's product because as people are trying to get things shipped, flights are being canceled, transportation is disrupted. It's gonna be a little bit tricky for the flower world when this all comes together with this much of an issue. So not only do we have a Sunday holiday and a pandemic holiday, we have a snow holiday. Oh my goodness. Leanne, um, we have someone asking what the variety of the white rose you're using. However, I was hoping to see if you may have a more open one so they can actually see the color inside. I don't think I have a really good open one. Um, that's about as open as I get with that kind of golden hue, but none of mine are very open. So yeah. And I don't know the variety. Do you remember the variety? Oh, cool. What do you think it is? Creme de la creme. Creme de la creme. I know it's a beautiful one, and we used them in um, the casket sprays for the advanced class today, and they turned out exquisite. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's such a lovely, lovely, long-lasting rose, and that soft, buttery hue is just grand. Okay. So I've just kind of looped things together here so you can see. Now another thing that we did in the advanced class when I was working with them on Monday is we talked about how wrapping is becoming very, very important. And we learned how to wrap efficiently. If you've been through advanced class, you know, but I'm not gonna do it here now because you learned it in advanced class. But ahead of time, I went ahead and did some wrapping so that you could see how you could incorporate that. So this was a beautiful yarn that I had. Um, it's just like this, okay? And I used the yarn and wrapped it around 18 gauge wire. So it's 18 gauge wire underneath and then yarn wrapped around now I want to put this into the foam and I don't want it to get all wet. So I'm going to take and put some corsage tape on the end just to keep it dry because I don't want the yarn to get wet and start wicking. So I'm just gonna go like this, get the end covered. And while I tape my ends, you guys can tell me what else is going on out there. They're loving those orange-throated daffodils. Oh, aren't those just the best? I'm like, oh my gosh. Thank you, Jimmy. If you're on with us, you're probably not because you're probably crazy busy trying to take care of your customers. But thank you because it was so wonderful to have those. Man, do you find that there are any flowers that should not be in water with flower food? 
You know, there's different opinions there. Some people say spring flowers, it's not necessary. Some say tropicals, it's not necessary. I tend to put flower food in everything and I don't find that it hurts anything. Some things that might not help as much, but the flower food, the benefit is it has the antibacterial. So it keeps the water clean. That's the value. Even if they don't need it for the food, they need it to keep the water clean. So I find the flower food to be really important on all things. So yes, I use it. And sometimes I think, really, do I need to use it? What a waste of time and money. But you know what? It's not a waste of time and money. It's a wonderful value and it's, it's very important. So very, very, very important. Leanne, do you know the name or the variety of those orange-throated ones? I knew you were going to ask it, and I do, but I don't. Um, you know what? It's in my email, and so I will look it up and tell you. I'll type it in later because I don't want to take time now to run off camera and open my email and find it. But um, yes. I do know, and I meant to look before I came on camera, and I forgot to do that. Um, so, sorry about that. But I will type it in the comments afterwards at 4 o'clock. So if you come back and look, you can see what it is. Promise. Because I do have the names on both of them. Leanne, so the technique using pipe cleaners in, inserted into the daffodil, mm -hmm. when, when do you decide to do that? Okay, so talking about adding a chenille or a pipe cleaner into a daffodil stem, okay? So you would have your stem and you would pierce it straight up through like so and then just give it a cut and then you design with the pipe cleaner in there it works as a wick to help drink and it also adds strength so that when you go to put it in it doesn't break i use it if i have a fragile daffodil these daffodils all had such strong stems that it wasn't necessary but if you had stems that weren't so strong then you would want to do that so that's how i make that judgment call is just how strong is the stem so what i did is just make an organic little curl and then find a spot, there we go, to insert it, bring it up and back around and insert it again, making sure I don't damage my flowers. And I can just kind of move it around. And what I'm doing is picking up the color from the top, bringing it down, and in doing that, Question for students, okay, if you've been to flower school, you know this. By adding this, what have I added? And I've actually added three things. Three things. So there's going to be three correct answers. By putting this into my design, what have I added? So that's your question. Let's see what you come up with there. And again, I'll do a quickie. If you're thinking about flower school and you think you're going to do it soon, do it real soon. Because if you do it by March 1st, so February 28th is the deadline, do it before March 1st, you can do it at the old pricing so you can save money. After March 1st, everything is going up. So. I, I always hate having to do a price increase, but the world has changed, prices are more expensive, and we have to. So make sure you register by February 28th. And that way I can be thrilled and give you the lower price. You can be thrilled because you saved money and all is good. So again, I've added three things by placing these wrapped wires into my design. And, Marisa or Michelle, what are you hearing? Are I, you... I think I have a winner, because that's what I thought it was. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Or Okay. Um, we had a few people. Tabitha um, said unity. John said dynamic line. Penny said movement, but Trish. 
was the first one who named all three. She said unity, dynamic line, and rhythm. Okay. Excellent. That's actually one that I didn't have. Um, so dynamic line and unity were two that I was planning on. That is correct. There's, and rhythm is correct. That's a good one. I didn't have that. So I've also added rhythm, but there's one more then. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> actually, you could, if you, you can, you can actually add two more. Oh. Right now that we think about it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys think are the others? I said texture over here. That's what I have. Yep. Texture, unity, and dynamic line was what I had. Rhythm is excellent. What else do you think we've added? Contrast. Contrast would be good too. You are correct. So those of you that know your elements, your principles, your advanced theory, this is advanced theory in action. And once you know your elements and principles, once you understand them, you can have so much fun with your design because all of a sudden you understand, oh wow, if I add dynamic line, the arrangement becomes more interesting. How cool is that? If I add this orange hue down below, I'm expanding the unity. If I add twisted yarn, I've added texture, which creates interest and contrast. Oh, it's just all such a magical, magical thing. I'm going to add some of my favorite things ever, the Gaelic, while you guys tell me what else is going on. So this isn't an element or a principle, but Christine and Elaine both said higher perceived value. Yes. Yes. Because I've added something interesting, so there's perceived value. I've also increased the size, and we all know the bigger it is, the better, the more value. You know, take up more space. So yes, definitely perceived value is an excellent answer. Good job, tribe. You guys are knocking it today. You know, you think you were professionals or something. I love it. You know, you just sort of make my life happy when you guys exhibit what you know and then share it with everyone so that we can all learn together. And don't you love Gaelic sleeves? You, you know, I think I should be hired by the Gaelic growers of the world because I would just vouch for them forever. I don't know that there is a Gaelic growers of the world commission, but if you do, pass my name on to them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not looking for a job. I have a job. I'm with you guys. This is my job and this is all I need to do. David's sitting there going, Leanne, no more. Stop, stop, stop. But, okay. What you got there, Marisa? I have a processing question about flower food. Um, so Rachel in their flower shop, um, they use flower food for the holding period and then the base life period. Is there a, like a different type of solution that they should be using for one or the other or they could, it, could it just be the same? You know, I tend to do a three-step process and there's lots of different ways about it and I would strongly encourage you to experiment in your own environment with your own water because depending on what kind of water you have it's going to change the variations but what I find works for me is when I process flowers I first off use quick dip okay so quick dip is a rapid hydrating solution. It lowers the pH, it makes the flower go, give me a drink, it makes it suck. It makes it rehydrate quickly. So I start with quick dip. Now you don't leave it in the solution. You take it, you put it in a little cup, you dip the flower, and then you put it into another vessel that has flower food in that. And the flower food has an antibacterial, it has a wetting agent that lowers the pH, and it has food, a sucrose, to make the flower happy. Then lastly, I use Crowning Glory. It actually just goes on the surface, 
It's an anti-transparent. It's a face cream for flowers. So it seals the moisture in and makes them last longer. So I use those three steps on most everything and I don't find that it really hurts anything and it always seems to help things. The other thing I like about these three products is they are non-toxic. So if you're like me and you live on coffee, if you accidentally spray Crowning Glory over the top of your coffee, or if you accidentally drop in a bit of flower food, you're not gonna die. It'll be okay. It's not deadly. And so I like these products. They're, they're safe. Um, you know, because in this day and age, we gotta think about what chemicals we have around us and how we're using things, because it could be a problem. And you don't want any problems, trust me. That's not a good thing. So, let's see, we've done had linear as it would grow, almost botanical. We did a little round nosegay clustered. I thought I'd do something that was just kind of fun, that mixed and matched. So I've got foam in a liner. And actually, I didn't have a liner that fit this, so I have two liners, so I have two pieces of foam, but you know what, whatever. It just sort of works. And then I like Pussy Willows and Forsythia, all those spring branches, they just make me happy. So I thought I could use either one. So let's let you guys vote. I don't want to use both, but which would you rather? Do you want me to use Pussy Willow? Okay. Or do you want me to use Forsythia? We're obviously doing yellow because it's daffodils, so that's your clue. But would you prefer Forsythia or Pussy Willow? So I'm just gonna set these down while you guys chat amongst yourselves, and then um, let me know what I need to be doing, and we'll just make it happen, so. Well, if I get away in, I say Pussy Willow. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was letting the tribe decide, but you know what? The, the studio has spoken, and they want Pussy Willow, so maybe we need to do that. Is that okay with you guys, if it's all right? Hold on, let's you? give them a We'll give them a chance. In. They're coming in. I'm seeing Pussy Willow on, on YouTube. Now, the question is, are you guys being honest, or are you just saying that? They're usually a pretty vocal crowd. If they didn't like it, they would tell us. <laughs> But that's what we love about them. We do not want yes people around here. We want people that really speak up. Now, while you guys are thinking about that, if you haven't shared this video, take a moment, click share, tag a friend, spread the love of daffodils around. Let the world know that daffodils are existing. So please share. If you're on YouTube, Make sure you click the thumbs up so that you know everybody goes, ooh, I love that. And there's, you know, I was on YouTube last week and I think that there was like seven or eight people that had clicked it. And then later I looked and there was a whole bunch more. So if you would take a moment and click the thumbs up, I would appreciate it. So share, tag a friend, click the thumbs up, love us, and then that makes me happy. So, okay, what's my story? Well, Go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say one as far as oh, the branches. Yeah. So over here on the Facebook side, they're voting for Scythia. Oh, and we're Pussy Willow on. Well, <laughs> we could go with Diane who wants both. Oh, and same with, oh, with Carol. Oh, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> You're the boss, Leanne. You decide. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know what? Maybe we will do both. We'll see. So I got... Italian Ruscus that I just stuck in here to get started. Um, well, hmm. I'm going to start with a little bit of Forsythia, just because as I look at it, it's kind of funky the way it's curving here. I kind of like that. Um, so we're going to play around with this. Let's see. Get things in here. So I've got a bit of Forsythia. Give it a cut. And it'll bloom out and be gorgeous, but for the moment it's not, but it will be. You can see it's got a little bud here and a little bit more. Here's some that started to bloom out. How can you go wrong with spring branches? You know, the um, Saracoca is blooming right now here in Portland, and Saracoca is the very, very first 
spring bush that blooms that's super fragrant and it's near my house and when I go out for a walk or I go running I always go down this one pathway because the Saracoca just embraces me and makes me feel so good I can smell it even through my mask it's that strong it's just so wonderful uh, and then after Saracoca you just know that the Daphne will be soon and for Scythia, you know, it just, oh, it just is such a grand time of the year. So much going on. Okay. Leslie has a question on quick dip. Can it be used on every flower, or are there some you should avoid? I use quick dip on most everything. You know, some people say, oh, don't do it on here, or don't do it on there. But I'm like, why not? I haven't really had anything that it hurts. So I use it on most everything. So what I did with my Italian Ruscus is I just wrapped it and then I'm going to make a hairpin because it's going to pop out over here, I can tell. It's not real secure, so I'm going to find that end and I've got a hairpin and just pin it into place so that it doesn't pop out, it stays put. And so what I've done is I've covered my mechanics with just two insertions so it's efficient and quick and easy and most of my foam is now concealed and now I can just start adding my flowers. So I've got my forsythia, okay, and then I could come in with some pussy willow because we couldn't decide, oh my goodness. You know, I feel like the mom that caves to her children when they say, okay, do you want this or do you want that? And they say, oh, we want everything. And you're like, no, you gotta pick. And then it's like, okay, whatever, you get it all. Um, so I'll go ahead and put some in. Maybe that's how peanut butter and jelly got invented. That must be it. It's the <laughs> peanut butter and jelly of flowers. I love it. You know, it's when you can't decide on an ice cream flavor, and so you have to get two scoops. I think the triple scoop is the best thing that was ever invented, though, because then you get three flavors. How cool is that? So, Liam, Molly says that... Um, her pink viburnum has been blooming sweetly for a few weeks ahead of the um, sir, I, the branch that you were saying, the Saracoca. Yep, yep. And she's like, just saying. <laughs> oh, really? Oh my gosh. Now, does pink viburnum does it have a fragrance to it? I've not. I've seen it, but I've not ever come up close to to smell it. Does it have a fragrance? Because that, that to me is springtime when all of a sudden you have fragrance in your life and it just, oh, you know, it just makes you so happy. And, and we need that. We need that, especially this year. Um, flowers are vital to our mental health. And if you can add fragrance, it adds so much. Well, Leanne, and going back to earlier when we were talking about ice cream, Amy, and in regards to the two choices of branches here, she says, you're supposed to always get two scoops. I love it. So it's a double scooper. So we did today. You know, all this talk of ice cream, do you know where I'm going to go tonight? I'm thinking I'm going to have to go get some ice cream. I don't keep it at home because I know if I have it at home, I will eat the whole thing. And David's even worse than me. Um, he is an ice cream junkie. And so between the two of us, it's like, well, there's no ice cream at the house. But you know what? Maybe tonight would be a good ice cream night, even though it's cold. Start the fire, light the candles, and eat ice cream. I think this is a good plan. Leanne, Molly said her um, pink viburnum does have a much fainter smell than the branch. Okay, but it does have some fragrance. How cool, I love that. So what's your favorite ice cream, Leanne? Mine has got to be like a butter pecan. Oh, I think we went over that already. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I love butter pecan. I do like strawberry too, because I'm a strawberry girl. I mean, anything strawberry, I just go, oh. Um, but you know, it sort of has to be homemade strawberry. Store strawberry never is as good. Homemade strawberry is just like the best thing ever. Well, Tabitha says um, she's one-upping uh, Molly with her... Er, Amy with her two scoops, she's like, she's going for a, tri going for a triple. 
She says Kona coffee ice cream, dark chocolate ice cream, and then macadamia nut ice cream. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. You know, we sound like we're all hungry or something. How funny is this? Ice cream sounds amazing. <laughs> I know. We're all just like, oh, my gosh. How fun. Well, Olga, is, now she's talking about hot apple pie with ice cream. Oh, okay. That is my, my treat of choice is pie. I mean, pie is like the best thing. I'm turning around so you can sit from the other side. Pie is like the best thing ever. And that's, um, those of you that know me know I don't cook, although I've had to learn to cook because of life, but I've never been a, a cook. And for 25 years, I had only made one meal one time, and it was a disaster. And so I just chose to never cook again. But my mother-in-law made me learn to make a pie because no woman should ever exist without being able to make a pie. And so I can do a pie. That's the only thing I can do, but I can do a pie. And um, kind of funny, but now I've started cooking. That's kind of weird, but I'm gonna give that up again. Probably for Lent, I think I'll give up cooking. That's just, it's, it's just wrong. It's not my skill. That, that's bigger <laughs> <laughs> I think the world will thank me actually. <laughs> so I had to put a pipe cleaner in this one because the stem was a little fragile so I added a pipe cleaner to it. You can see I'm growing up and you know what having the double scooper of Pussy Willow and Forsythia is kind of speaking to me. I'm liking that. Then I'm going to go back and we got some incredible incredible billy balls in for class. The Crispedia, they're big and lush and fabulous and the class didn't use all of them so I'm going to go ahead and stick some in here because I think it'll be a nice counterbalance to the daffodils. I'm just kind of bringing it in low and so, tucking it. Leanne, can we ask the tribe a question? We can. But I'm going to um, kind of give them a little hint um, in regards to Leo Kathleen's comment here. They say this arrangement is so pretty. It looks like a natural spot in the yard where spring foliage and blooms grow up together. So what type of an arrangement is that? Huh, good question. Okay, flower school students. You've she, learned this. They just gave a perfect textbook answer. <laughs> I love it. So what arrangement is this? You, the tribe, answer that because you're correct. It is a perfect textbook dis definition there. So, oh, I've got an answer on YouTube. Okay, what have you got there? Vegetative. Perfect. That was Julia. Yay! Okay. So yes, it is a vegetative design. Now... When I learned, I learned from the floral master. He's absolutely amazing, Jack Richards. Um, he is an Ikebana master. He is a floral designer extraordinaire. Uh, died just, a, well, I started to say a few years ago. It's been a while, he died. But um, Jack Richards was teaching a class and made us all sit and practice saying it. And the proper pronunciation, according to Jack, who is the master, who I bow at his feet, and so I still follow it, whether it's true or not, that's another story, but I believe it, is vegetative. So you've got to get that extra t in there, vegetative. And Jack was brilliant and vegetative. And every time that you made a design, if you had, I have to find one here, if you had a leaf that had a bug bite out of it, you would use that because it's part of nature. And it's a statement that it's real and that it has been part of life. And so you would include this with the bug bite and make sure and let it Show, so that people could see that because it's part of what makes that leaf special. It's part of that leaf's life and you would just include that in there 
And I just think that that's very, very, very special. So yes, vegetative is this design. And now I'm just filling in, I added some allium. I added crispidia. And I want something else just to bring in a little more yellow. So I have a tiny bit of solid aster. Now, next week, we'll be going back to Valentine's. So I'll be doing some reds, some pinks, you know, all of the typical Valentine's story. You're going to be crazy busy next week. And I understand that. So you may be at work. You may be poking posies. But you know, with a live, just turn it on in the background. Listen to it from the, you know, as you're working and poking, you can just listen and be part of the tribe. And join us, even though you're busy, for a respite. Give yourself a little break. Don't stop because you're busy. But taking that moment and gathering with your tribe for a little break at Valentine's might be just what the doctor ordered. So I've got a little bit of solid aster while I finish things up. But here, what else is going on out there? Well, Deanna, I wanted to give a special shout out to Christian, who was just promoted to full-time assistant at the flower shop after only six months. Oh, Christian, congratulations. That's pretty fabulous. That means that you're doing something right, and they recognize that. So I am so proud of you. You know, each and every one of you is going to be working your butt off in this coming time period. And I just want you to know that we got your back. We know you're doing that, and we're rooting for you. And we just want you to be successful. We want you to be happy. We want you to have fun. I'm going to make one more. I've got some, I've got enough time. So I'm going to go ahead and just set that right there. Oh. How fun is that? But you know what? Now that I've set that there, do you see what's missing? Can you see what's missing? Now that I've got it here, I can. Notice how full it is on this side and how empty it is right there. My balance is off. And sometimes when you're up close, you can't see that but my balance is off here, so I need to fix that. I can't finish this with bad balance. I mean, badly and, oh, bad, 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 bad. So taking this time, just add a little bit more here. Now sometimes when I do live, I don't catch things. And then teacher Marisa, when she goes to make the photographs for us, she fixes it because she knows it's wrong. And so she comes along and doctors things so that it looks correct in the picture. So if you see things on a live and you go, oh my gosh, Leanne, you're, you're crooked. You shouldn't be doing that. Know that Marisa comes along and fixes it afterwards to make it correct. But sometimes I set it back and I stand back and I look and I go, Oh, it's just not right. It needs blah, 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 blah. And then I go ahead and I can fix it on camera. But if I hadn't fixed it, she would have fixed that for me before she took pictures. So that's kind of something that you can do too. Sometimes you set it back and you stand away from it and you know what's wrong and you can fix it yourself and solve that problem. So let's see. One more little thing that I had done when I was thinking about flower class, and you know, I did this one where I, I showed you the wrapping and putting that in. When you do wrapping, you can do it like this with the wire and such, or you could even just wrap the vase. So this is wrapped with bark wire, twine, and it's got a little bit of sisal in there and it gives you a very organic look. And then all you need to do, how simple is this? Once you have a beautiful vessel like that, just take your blooms, give them a cut, 
and set them in. Yeah, we have um, also another great definition for the vegetative. Angie said when she learned 30 years ago, she was told by a designer, if you were an ant, you would love to go explore in the arrangement. I think that's great. You know, and right now with um, fairy worlds being so popular, that's kind of what you're making is a little flower fairy world. And that's great. Then you just need a ladybug to put in there or a bird just to finish it off. But you can see how simple, all because of the wrapping. So those things that you learn in flower school, taking the time to interpret them in different ways, all of a sudden, you've got the coolest designs ever. Now again, take a moment and share this. Tag a friend. Don't forget, prices are going up March 1st. So if you're joining us for Flower School, I have five spaces left in the class that starts March 1st because we've reduced class sizes so that we can do that way far apart, six feet, mass, the whole thing. Five spots left March 1st. If you want to join us online, you're welcome to, and you can come in at the 2020 prices. But remember, 2021, March 1st, the price goes up. So if you're thinking about it, you want to do it now. Thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate it, giving up a whole hour of your day. I'll see you next week. We'll do Valentine's. We've got a lot of fun planned for you. But until then, make sure you get outside. Look at the snow. Look for spring. Look at the sunshine, depending on where you are. But experience nature and let that make your creativity come out. I'll see you all next week. I'm going to get out of here, get some ice cream, and do some